Hey everybody, what's poppin'? Thanks for listening to the Bless Up Podcast. We really do appreciate it, and we really hope you enjoy this week's episode. Well, welcome back. Welcome. Bless Up Podcast. I feel like if there is something we are consistent, TK, on, it is being inconsistent yeah. with posting these. Consistently inconsistent. You know, it... That's a tongue twister. That really is. Inconsistent. Or consistently inconsistent. <laughs> exactly. But... Seems like, truthfully, the enemy has been attacking us, this podcast, because, like, my son got sick, and then I got sick, and it's just been with busy schedules and whatnot. Like, we keep trying to get on a schedule here, and it seems like the enemy is just really good at attacking, which makes me feel comforted, because I feel like he knows that God is doing something with this podcast. And, yeah. you know, we know that because you guys have been so very kind and sharing with us like what this podcast has done for you whether it's been a blessing to you or something just made you think you guys have been very kind with your words and we just want to say before we get started thank you for that Um, and please continue to give us feedback because if uh, we're making satan angry we're doing something right which Mm -hmm. excites me but anyway so we got we got a special one for you today um but before we get too heavy i got a story to share Um, you you know the story our people at home don't though okay so i can't remember if it was last week or the week before but the nfl draft you already know where i'm going with this don't Uh, you see me going with uh, Uh, banana man no no that's that's that could be a topic though um so me and tk have been talking about getting together for the nfl draft pretty much since last year's NFL draft. Um, just a new tradition we wanted to start, just getting together. For the drafts. For the drafts, NBA, NFL, just because TK has gotten more interested in sports over the last few years. So I was very excited about this. We had it on the books. TK was going to come over to my house, him and his wife, and we were just going to have a great time. And so it's probably like an hour before they were fixing to get there. And my wife just brought my son home, picked him up from the sitter. And... He had not been feeling the greatest this week, but he comes in and he is like just very red, very warm, and I'm like super bummed. I'm like literally in my chief shirt. I'm dressed in my chief's apparel. For those of you who don't know, the Kansas City Chiefs, I am a diehard fan. So I was in my and he was before they were good too. Yeah, I'm like not a fair weather. Like when they were bad, I was still a fan. So. But I had my Patrick Mahomes shirt on. Like, I was raring to go. And so I, my son is, like, not feeling well. I go and pick him up. I'm giving him a hug. I'm like, it's okay, buddy. I kid you not. We take two, three steps into the house, and I'm just sitting there being a good dad. It's okay, buddy. We're going to give you a, a warm or cold bath, and it'll cool you off. Let me tell you guys, the puke, the amount of puke that came out of this little body, I'm still trying to wrap my head around, TK, how so much barf comes out of a little two-and-a-half, 30-something-pound baby. <sighs> so I have a question. Does that kind of stuff then make you in turn gag? No, no. I have a strong stomach, but okay. here's what happened is he pukes, and I kid you not, from my shirt, my Patrick Mahomes shirt is no longer red. It is now macaroni and cheese colored. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm talking, I had to change everything. Like, my shirt, my shorts, my socks. Thankfully, and here's the thing, I was so close. I was actually moments away from putting on my Crocs. Could you imagine throw up in Crocs? Uh, Seriously. Uh, well, at least Crocs are plastic and easy to clean. They would have been, but could you imagine it in the holes right here? Like, I... There's people watching this who are getting sick to the stomach just from listening to your description. Well, let me let me wrap up this story then because <laughs> I felt just compelled to share this because I'm at this Sorry point. Sorry if you're eating if you're watching this. I hope over, you're not yeah. e- eating a, a brunch or a lunch or something yeah. like that when you listen to this. But no, like it just I'm covered in puke at this point, head to toe. My wife is just staring at me. And both of us, we don't know whether to be sickened or impressed by how much puke has came out of Emmett. And I'm sitting there thinking, as my wife does take him from me, and I basically strip right then and there and start cleaning up barf. I began to think in my head, I'm like, I hope this is not an indication of how draft day is going to go for my Chiefs, <laughs> which it did not, thankfully. But you know how my brain works, TK. For those of you that don't, 
I'm always thinking, how can we make this spiritual? Oh. And I, here's the best I could come up with in that moment is I was cleaning up puke, wondering, man, is this going to be an indication of the draft? I began to think, you know, the Lord uses even the smallest of vessels to you to do big things. You know what I'm saying? You're, I know you're like disgusted with this this point, like really, but it's the truth. <laughs> you got it. You got to make it spiritual, otherwise it's just gross. That's what I was thinking yeah. about. I'm cleaning this puke up. Like, man, God really does use. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. You know, even the smallest of vessels to do the biggest of things. That's the best illustration I'd come yeah. up with. Mm-hmm. That's. <laughs> You're so sickened right now. You and the, everyone like watching this is like, why did I click on this episode? <laughs> this is a horrible episode. All the pastors are like, oh, uh, like John that down. Yeah, yeah that's it. good. <laughs> yeah, the, the pastors, the, the the real ones are like, that's good, that's good. But normal people are like, you're an idiot. Why would you share that to start this off? Now no one wants to watch what what else you got. <laughs> yeah. but anyway, I don't know. It's. Uh, Thankfully, draft went well. Got the shirt clean. Emmett is feeling much better now. Thank the Lord. The Crocs were saved. The Crocs were saved. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. But yeah, I I knew you knew that story because me and TK, I thought our plans were gonna get canceled. But after he barfed on Daddy, yeah. he was fine. Nothing like a good barf to make you feel better. <laughs> that'll again, that'll preach yeah. whether you want it to or not. So, <laughs> well, now that you're nice and sickened. <laughs> We really do got something special for you guys tonight uh, that is a little bit more fun, a little more serious, though. But I feel like it'll be fun because the last podcast we did, it was a QA. and a mm-hmm. And one of the questions that was asked was, what are your guys' testimonies? And we kind of briefly hit on our stories. And a few of you actually reached out and said, we'd love to hear in full more of your story. And so when we were brainstorming about what to talk about tonight. I thought it would be so cool to start sharing our testimonies. And so tonight, TK is going to go into a little bit more detail about his story, about how he came to really step into a relationship with Christ that was his own. And so mm-hmm. I'm excited to hear it. I've heard this before, but I feel like anytime you get to hear someone's testimony, it just there's power behind it. Because the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And so... I'm excited to hear you once again. I feel like it's going to be a blessing to maybe someone out there who is going to hear this, and you'll be able to cover up the horrendous story that I just told with your good Christ-filled story. <laughs> so, yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. You ready? Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to take a quick break, maybe warm up the coffee a little bit, and then when we get back, we're going to turn this guy loose. So we will be right back in just a moment. All right, folks, so we're just going to go ahead and let TK just turn him loose and let him share his story. And throughout it, I may interject and ask some questions, yes. whether it be for clarity or just something that I feel like would be a good point to get an answer to. So yes. without further ado, my good friend, have at it. TK's testimony, folks. It all started in 1993 when I was born. Get your popcorn. It's going to be a minute. <laughs> so just kidding. Um, so yeah, I was, I was born, um, my mom, um, and father divorced when I was very young. I was like, I think two or three, I think. I don't really remember them being together. Um, but after that, I, um, I, my mom moved in with my Nana and Papa, so I spent a lot of time with them, um, got really close to them, and um, they are a lot of the reason why I am today. Um, but, of course, then my mom remarried when I was six years old, and um, went from being an only child to having... Um, three step siblings and then shortly after they got married they got pregnant with twins so in a span of like a year i went from being an only child to having five brothers and sisters brady bunch style (laughs) yeah so but you know i I was 
very fortunate. Like I feel like my step family took me in really good, and I like, I always felt close, you know, to my step siblings um, when I was a kid. Um, and matter of fact, really, um, I was always a really shy kid. Um, I like I said, I really grew close to my grandparents. And I just gravitated towards them. You know, I'd spend a lot of, like, the weekends with them. I'd go over there in the summer. Um, and they were who really kept me in church. You know, I would always, you know, be faithful to go to church with them. But and because I was so shy, I never really wanted to go to, you know, children's church or anything like that. You know, as a matter of fact, for Sunday school, back when I had Sunday school, now it's, you know, we have more like life groups, not like early in the morning, like, you know, we did back then. But um, back then in Sunday school, I, instead of going to my own, you know, third grade Sunday school class, I would always help my Nana teach the kindergartners. Um, so in case you're curious why TK acts like he's 80. It's because he never went to kids' church. He went straight to the adults. Yes. Uh, sk- skipped a few. So that, that explains a lot. Yeah. So I went, I went, um, spent a lot of time with the adults, which I do think, like Zach said, really did kind of help mature me. Like I feel like I've always been very mature for my age. But <laughs> in some aspects, I should say. Um, but, you know, throughout that shyness, though, I, re- I realize now looking back, I didn't really necessarily realize this at the time, but I never did really develop friendships. Now, I was close to my brothers, you know, my stepbrothers. Um, I was close with them and, you know, I considered them friends. But really outside of that, I didn't really have any friends in school. Um, I didn't ever go, like, I mean, if I hung out with other kids it was with my you know my brothers being around too it was never just me you know so I just on the weekends I never you know I would and I would go over to Nana's and stuff like I would just kind of chill you know I didn't really ever do things with friends then and I was setting for a very lonely lifestyle but so I stayed this way for a long time I didn't really realize I, you know, I was, you know, I was always content. I never like necessarily felt any like negative way, but you know, I, I definitely still needed to work on that because you know, I was, you know, the shyness would have been something that would have developed into a problem, you know. But my brother finally decided. The, the, decided to really get me to come to youth back in in 10th grade finally talked me into it um and so I started coming and that was really very impactful for me um number one you know actually going to these services it helped me kind of it helped mature me to where like I was going for church for my own person, again, not just because like my grandparents were like take me to church, it kind of helped me grow my own relationship mm-hmm. with the Lord. But secondly, throughout interactions and stepping out and like you know developing you know friendships within that youth group, it really helped me slowly step out of my comfort zone and get more comfortable to be around other people and really worked on me and you know and then I feel like God specifically placed friendships such as Zach and uh, other key friends in my life to really help continue to work me out of that com- uh, comfort zone and really you know make me who I am today which the people who know me now at work, you know, I'm, you know, I talk, you know, I'm very easy, you know, to 
talk to and you know I try to be very outgoing and at work and stuff and you know and I tell people oh back when I was a kid I you wouldn't see me I was like an awkward little loner kid who didn't really talk to anybody but I now I'm like 180 you know from that and you know this has been a tremendous blessing and it's amazing how God really can change you and you know and you know obviously it was a process but you know it it took work and it took me getting out of my comfort zone really having you know I had to actually to people who are shy and that may be listening to this and want to know how to kind of get more out of your comfort zone it takes just like kind of kind of forcing your way like forcing you to just hang with a group and just kind of forcing yourself to talk to people even if you think that you might be kind of like even if you think that they might be thinking why wow, nothing's this guy like randomly talking to us for like you'd be surprised with how he will you know take you in and like really be kind to you sometimes it just takes having the confidence in yourself mm -hmm. to take that first step and what I grew to learn is you know I have a lot more to offer than what I would think you know a lot of my shyness came from lack of self-confidence came from anxiety came from fear of rejection but you know whenever you realize that hey number one you know you're you know god's masterpiece you know mm, it's good you know he's made you the way you are for a reason you're a great person but secondly whenever you realize that the worst someone can do is like tell you no or do whatever like i think it's just a word and you can't let it hold you back it's good and I've been very thankful to have good friends that have helped me kind of realize that as I've gotten older in life. Um, so I guess that's really one thing that God really changed for me for the better um, in my life. You know, a lot. Of, you know, my testimony isn't like a lot of people. You know, where people like come from, like really like broken backgrounds you know and overcome like addictions and stuff i don't have anything like that but in my situation though um i very I, I am very much thankful for the growth that god has done in me and i can i oftentimes think back and i never did like i said i didn't really realize it in the moment but i think back I was like man i was so lonely back then but now i'm so thankful that i have such you know, I can't I can't imagine going back to that yeah. loneliness. I'm just so grateful for the joy mm. that God has given me since then. Mm. Um, you have any questions? I, I, have, I have a few that I think would be really good for the people to know. So you mentioned so this is kind of like part one. I would go on to. I think I think a good clear like when do you think you realize because you mentioned you were headed towards a lonely life at what point did you realize that because I think when we're younger we don't realize these things maybe until something kind of just slaps it right in our face or someone maybe tells us it's so like when for you did you realize you were headed towards a lonely life well, because you're shyness to be honest with you I didn't realize to after the fact I, I think I think it, it really dawned on me in college because mm. we had a really good friend group and like we was always hanging out, yeah. always doing silly things, playing charades, <laughs> whatever. Um, and I would long for that. Mm. Like I would long for the week throughout the week. I would long. To, I can't wait to get to get on Saturday or whatever. And and one day it just dawned on me. I was like, man. Like I genuinely like crave this, but thirteen year old me was content just sitting by himself in a room all weekend. Mm. It's like 
And it just made, I started to ponder, I was like, man, if I would have just continued that lifestyle, continued just being content in my loneliness, mm. you know, allow anxiety to continue to control me, how would that have then gone into effect me in the workspace, mm. me in, yeah. you know, who knows, maybe God would have found in other ways to like help break me out of my comfort zone. Sure. But um, I, I was headed to a, a you know a, a lonely life. I really do believe that a lonely life full of anxiety and fear. Mm. But I'm thankful that that's not the case, though. I think something powerful and just first off hearing your story and knowing you very well. But we were literally created for a community. And I've shared this on a past podcast, but God literally made people to be together in community. So like you look back to the garden, like before sin entered the world, God saw Adam and said, it's not good for man to be alone. He knew there was community meant to happen there. And yes, again, marital aspects to that. But bottom line, we were meant to go through life with people. Doesn't mean it has to be a big group. Sometimes, like you mentioned, just a small group of friends that help bring out the best in us is all we need. And so I guess before you move on to part two, I, I had just maybe a, a question for you. When is the first maybe recollection in your mind of when you did step out of your comfort zone to where you said, you know what, I'm not going to stay at home this weekend, but maybe there's something going on or someone's invited me to something. I'm going to, it's it's uncomfortable for me, but I'm going to do it because I feel like I should, because I feel like it'll make me better. Like, can you recall an instance like that for you where you first did that? I have a couple of instances. Um, one was, I remember, I, well, I remember probably the, when I, I remember one situation was, I remember at a camp one year. Um, I was, I, this is probably like maybe junior year in, in school. I went, I went to church camp, but just going to church camp alone was a big, you know, I, I, so just to put into preference, I never did actually stay the night with another friend until I was in 10th grade. Mm. That was the first time I ever wow. spent the night with a, another friend. Um, so, you know, um, junior year in camp, I believe, um, I went, you know, I didn't really, I didn't want to just like hang by myself at camp. So I purposely hung out, um, I'm not going to say names out of respect, but I certainly just kind of forced myself into hanging out with three people. And they were kind of like all hanging out together mm-hmm. the entire time. And I'm sure, I'm sure I probably annoyed them because <laughs> I just like kind of would just butt in and just like hang with them. But, um, I was like, you know, I, I really made the efforts like I'm not going, I'm not going to allow myself to. I'm going to force myself to interject yeah. with other people. And I think that really helped me too. Because I remember my... Because I remember I wanted to start... In school, in 10th grade, I wanted to start sitting with the kids that I went to church with um, at lunch. But I had a... I was sitting at another group of people. And and I just couldn't get the... Get the encouragement... Courage to yeah. get up and actually go sit somewhere else and like, hey, I'm, I'm sitting with you guys now and like in the middle of the screen and they're like, why are you sitting here? Like, uh, no. Even though I'm sure they wouldn't have said that, but in my head, that's all I can think. Enemy was attacking your mind. Yeah. yeah. And so, junior year, you know, it's that first day of school lunch, have no clue where you're going to sit. You're looking around. At least for me, shy me is like I have no clue yeah, like it's really a panic trying to figure out where you're gonna sit on the first day of lunch because you're like who's gonna want to sit by me um so 
I sat down at a random table of like some random kids, and then I remember I actually someone looked at me like, "You do," <laughs> and then just so happened, someone from church just so happened to sit at the table next to the mm. table I sat at, and that table was empty other than them. And I was like, I automatically just got up <laughs> and moved over there, but you know, me kind of pushing myself to be more outgoing than that summer camp. Mm prior to the start of junior year really helped me even be able to get the encouragement just get mm-hmm. up and change tables That's even good. on that yeah so baby steps led to bigger baby steps yeah bigger steps and, and then, then yeah. you know i started actually hanging out with as i got closer to friends i did more outside of church of you know hanging mm-hmm. out with hanging out with friends and you know, go on, you know, goes on and on, you know. Mm. That's good. That's really good. Well, by all means, continue with part two, and uh, I'll, I'll continue to ask questions along okay. the way. But do you have any? So I'm kind of kind of fade out of my shyness part. Do you have any last things you want to ask about that? I think just or, just one thing to maybe add to your your story that I know you would agree with. People sometimes think that, well, I'll just not, you know, if I don't hang out with anybody or don't do anything and I just seclude myself, I can't get in any trouble. And there might be a little bit of truth in that to where you may not get into trouble like in the normal sense, but mentally you're putting yourself in trouble because that's becoming a norm for you. And the less you hang out with people and you don't get into that community that God meant for us to have. It is causing so much unhealthiness in your life that, like you said, you may not realize till later on. And I think, I think something to remember is there are consequences to doing nothing as well. Yeah. And that is sometimes equally, if not more dangerous, because I, I won't name names, but you and I both know people that were not as fortunate or didn't make the, the – they didn't challenge themselves to step out of their comfort zone. And because of that, they still – just live secluded lives, yeah. lonely, and a lot of them I know are on like medication for their depression, and it's like God didn't meant for you to live life that way. And I, I don't know. Hearing your story, I know it's not maybe the the normal testimony, but it's one I think so many people can relate to because everyone in here has felt lonely or felt secluded. But you talking about getting out of your comfort zone, I think, is something that the church needs to hear. And so as well, it's proof. That, because you mentioned just some of your core memories were hanging out with some of your friends. This is kind of a sidebar, and I'm going to stir the pot a little bit. But it goes to show you, you can have fun outside of being under the influence of alcohol or drugs or partying. Like you mentioned just simply playing charades or getting together playing board games or just getting together and visiting and having fun like with our people from church. I remember some of those memories as well, and they're special. And coming from someone who did do all those things and was under the influence of a lot of things, it doesn't even compare. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, just your sharing your story like makes me realize a lot of things about my own. So I just wanted to share that as you continue. And, and that's a good point too because reality is, yeah, I was getting into trouble being doing stuff by myself. But the more I was by myself, you know, I was, you know, being contained by those thoughts mm-hmm. of that. I'm not good enough to go sit with those people. Taking you captive. I'm not. Yeah. Like, why would those people want me to sit with them? I would, you know, like I said, the anxiety of the first day of one is like, where am I going to sit? Where am I going to sit? Who's going to want to? And that's having that sort of anxiety and self doubt mm. in yeah. your mind, you know, isn't healthy. Bible says take every thought captive, and if you don't, they'll take you captive, right? Yeah. So. So I guess part two of my testimony is just going to be more talking about of just, I guess the amazingness, the amazingness, that is your word, that's probably not a word. Um, I'm good at, I'm good at making up words. Of, I think it's actually a word. Oh, is it? I think. <laughs> you, you continue on. I'm going to go to Google um, University real quick. But it's just, I'm just going to kind of just share like how, this, how God, how trusting in Him has blessed my life. It is basically. a word. Amazing. It's going to be amazingness, which is a word. So, okay, good. But, 
So, going, you know, how, how to start this? I'm not even sure how to start this. I guess I'll just say this. I have my cool group of friends. I was the last one to get married. I was, I was, I was a third wheel a lot. I am a professional third wheel. <laughs> It's true. He uh, he was a great third wheel when me and Emily were uh, so, dating. So yeah, I was a professional <laughs> third wheel. I know uh, that probably sounds like a way in place to start off, but you know I didn't get married until I was 26 mm-hmm. years old, I believe. If my math is correct, it is. <laughs> um, Why do I remember that? Um, uh, tr- but maybe 27. 26. 26. Okay. <laughs> um. But, you know, there was a lot of patience in that. Mm. Because, you know, you see your friends getting married, you see your um, friends dating and everything, and I didn't do a whole lot of dating, I I did do some. Um, it, It took a lot of patience. And I really wanted to really, I, I was very set to find the right person. Um, now, throughout that, uh, there were some people that um, I had kind of talked to over the years. And some people, um, I'm very thankful God kind of led me not to... Mm-hmm pursue because I don't think that looking back I could see where that could have led to bad scenarios that's a sermon of itself don't but rush. Don't um, rush. I, I tried to be very patient which is very hard at times yeah. whenever I was 22 I believe um, my papa passed away and Life just got really chaotic. Um, I, I, at the time, I was living with my nan and papa. Um, and my mom and my aunt were living together with my sisters and my aunt's two kids. And they got, they had to leave from where they were living and they moved in with my nana all on the same weekend. So it, one weekend went from me and my one Friday. It was me, and my nan, and papa living together. Then by Monday, it was my papa was dead, and it was me, my nana, my aunt, my mom, my two sisters, and my two cousins mm-hmm. all in one household. That was a very tough few years after that. The point I remember turning 25, and I remember thinking, I'm 25? Like, like, honestly, those years between 22 and 25 are a complete blur to me. And I wasn't really in a very healthy state of mind. And So coming out of that season, I finally realized I'm just going through the motions of life. I'm not really pursuing Christ as I need to. I am just checking, you know, stamping the check every day. And I decided to start... um, I decided to start focusing on the Lord more. Well, at this time, Zach was pastoring at um, Huntsville. And it's about 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes away from where TK was living at the time. And so one day, I think it was his birthday, I want to say. He was preaching on his birthday. And on a Sunday morning, and me and a buddy of ours and our wife wanted to come and see him. 
and of course Miranda, I got introduced to Miranda, my wife, that day, which I have do not remember at all. One of my she, she was not yet serving as one of my no she was no she wasn't no yet. she wasn't okay I, but she <clears throat> yeah she would eventually become one yeah. of my youth leaders so she so, so a full circle a mutual friend of ours introduced us and it was one of my leaders yeah <laughs> yeah and so you know I I guess I didn't probably think much of it because I don't remember the introduction but <laughs> but you know I guess. The mutual friend told Zach, and Zach told me, and I, I think we should have shared this before, but I say now after that to say was, I still wasn't in the right mindset. Remember you saying that too? Yeah. I, I still, you know, because like I said, I just kind of finally gotten to, to the point to where you coped. I was beginning to kind of cope with my emotions and really trying to change myself. And... As I believe I've shared, the next summer is when me and Miranda started dating. But I don't think it was, I, I think it's beautiful by design how, like, you know, I might have met her at that point, but I was no means ready. Hmm. And just little things God provided in my life just throughout that, not even a full year, changed me. Yeah. As I was like, and it even got to the point to where I even like told myself before me and Miranda started dating, you know what, God, I'm not even going to start stressing about finding someone anymore. Mm. Like, I'm just going to follow you. Mm. And if I never get married, I'm happy with that. If... You for, but if I do, I know it's going to be because you provided that for me. You were satisfied with living that Paul so life, I, being, being single yeah. and doing this. I just decided I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to work on my, you know, my relationship. And as after working on my relationship, you know, getting my mind right, it's mm. when God provided our relationship. Mm. At and, the right time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know I may have been 26 you know all my friends were married for the most part I believe at the time mm -hmm. um, and but, and and you were in every single one of those yeah, weddings but all one. those weddings you know you have people are saying well you're gonna get you have people like looking for girls for you and everything like that like you know I'm sure as I'm sure as single people who are in the late 20s know there can be some pressure to yes find that person but my thing to tell you is that if you focus on just you and the lord first most mm. i feel like that is the key to really being able to then trust him to provide that for you instead of That's going good. out and looking for it yourself mm -hmm. is what i had to find out yeah um but so me and Miranda get engaged and um we're we're waiting playing and stuff and I'm still working here at the pizza place and the Leonardo's. She was she was in Huntsville still. She was in Huntsville. TK was over here forty five minutes here. away yeah. in Harrison. They were engaged but we're you know, trying to figure life out. Yeah, what, yeah what's, what's, what, what am I going to do? I, yeah. I, it, so May comes around. I haven't, we was going to get married. So it's May 2019. We was going to get married in November 2019. And so I was trying, I, I wasn't going to start, like I was going to kind of start waiting to look for a job until the summertime because, in Huntsville, because obviously I didn't, you know, the drive and stuff. But yeah. May comes around though. And this, like this lady who worked with Miranda and oh that worked with Miranda I'm sorry this lady who went to church with Miranda um at um they were in their job was looking for a, someone you know, to hire and she just so happened to think to herself that hey you know what Miranda is getting married 
Miranda's a pretty awesome person. Anyone who she is marrying has to be decent. somewhat decent. And she, so she thought to ask her, do you think your husband would want to do this job? And she said, well, I don't understand. How? I don't know. So on a, on a Thursday, I believe it was, she sent me, she mailed me an application. Um, I filled it out. I um, hung out with Miranda that evening in Huntsville. And then the next Friday, she brought it in to the people for me. And then that next Monday, I had an interview. And then that next Thursday or Friday, one or the other, I was hired. So I'm within a week. And staying with my mindset of, you know, I'm just, you know, I wasn't something that I stressed about. Like, I wasn't, like, overly stressed about finding a job. Like, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to wait. I know God's going to provide. Like, but just the amazement that, you know, me and Marina really was put all relationship on the foundation of the Lord. Yes. And here, because of that, like, beautifully provided that job for me. Mm. And so for the first <coughs> few um, months of that job, I obviously had to travel back and forth from Huntsville to yeah. um, Harrison. It wasn't the best drive. It wasn't that bad in the morning. It was actually kind of peaceful. But on the way home in the evening, it was very annoying but um but then of course we got married and i very i can't say enough of just the blessings that happen from just people that love us who blessed us in our wedding and for what they did for us um i could go on on that but but we're living in huntsville um um newly married um, throughout our time in Huntsville we finally we decide you know what we decide that we want to move back to Harrison part of it is and so what what how are we how are we gonna do that well you know my nana wanted you know to sell the house and it just kind of worked out to where we was able to purchase the house for my nana. And everything worked out to where as we purchased the house, you know, Miranda found a job to where she could start, you know, she works at the school, so she could start, you know, at the beginning of the school year, which was perfect mm-hmm. because Miranda wanted, she was working at the daycare in Huntsville. She wanted to work through that summer. So that jo- job just perfectly aligned to when she wanted to leave and start her new job. Um, I was in the circuit clerk's office in Madison County. Um, there just so happened to be a lady I knew who in the clerk's office here that was stepping down and leaving and her she was leaving whenever I we was going to be moving the same time that me we was going to be able to move into this house so she said would you want to you think you'd want to do a job here I said yeah sure I got an interview it worked seamlessly I'm doing the exact same thing I was doing in Madison County here and these aren't coincidences yeah these are these aren't. You, you, you can speak to that. Yeah. And just the, the, the way that this was so... This has not just happened because of, you know, well, that was ironic or, man, that worked out. You, it's because of God. When you're seeking God, things like that that seem like coincidences or, like, super ironic, yeah. they're just God things. And the thing is, and I think back, you know, really, I had no qualification to get the job necessarily, well, I won't say I didn't have any qualification, but like I didn't have any experience in the field of the clerk's office whenever Manners County hired me, but they hired me based off my bosses, there's gut, which actually turned out to be a really good decision between 
me and the the person who um, they were thinking on hiring turns out that the the person actually got caught doing some bad things and the because the the person they were thinking of hiring was actually someone who actually had experience but to, but in hindsight going with following what God following her and, and, yeah. and hiring me was the better decision for her but also if it wasn't but it was it was that though just them hiring hiring me that gave me the experience to then be able to transfer yeah. here so it's just like all these webs just kind of interlinked perfectly and just throughout my marriage though you know meeting Miranda and then just it's and it's continuing on in my own life and I'm sorry I feel like I've been kind of every like everywhere in this no, I, I, didn't, I didn't really it's been good it's kind of hard to, to wrap up you know kind of get it all in my head sit how it's in my head so but I guess I'm just saying that throughout my life I've just been absolutely amazed with what happens whenever you trust in God? Come on. And even my first job, I remember, you know, I didn't. I was. I didn't work without throughout college, um, but I was able to kind of budget, you know, my financial aid out throughout the semester to where I didn't have to work. Um, and but after college of course I needed to get a job um, and even like getting on the pizza place like I said well I remember you know because my papa was like hey you really need to get looking and I put in some applications and didn't really hear back on really anything and I said okay I'll really you know I, I want it because I wanted to go help at youth camp that year I said, okay, at this youth camp, you know, I'm really going to hit the ground running and really pursuing. So I uh, prayed about it over youth camp. That Monday, I came back from a youth camp uh, after, you know, helping with the youth. I got called in for an interview. And I've, I've, I've just been amazed time and time again. I can just... Um, go into like just different things that where God has just absolutely been faithful and I it's it, it just makes me speechless as you can see like as I'm having a hard time just describing it because God is just so good all the time and he has provided for me and blessed me so much and and I'm just so thankful. So, you know, my life will burst that I try to live by is, and I've said this, I think in our last episode, um, Proverbs 16 and 3, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. And I'll tell you, if you truly do that, he really will bless your socks off. Mm. I can tell you testimony after testimony and how he has provided those blessings into my life. Two things before we go to our wrap up. I just love about your story, TK, is it's a story of, of God's timing, not your timing. You trusting God, not just with relationships, with jobs, with situations and circumstances, but you trusted him with that, with his timing and not your timing. And because of that, you were blessed. Whereas if you would have rushed into these things, it may have not succeeded as such, you know, and you just named like how you took your time to pray and you didn't just jump into anything. And I think in life, so many people want to do that. They jump into jobs, they jump into relationships, they jump into different things before they prayerfully consider, okay, God is now the right time. And they want to do things on their timing and not God's. And one thing I can tell you is the only thing that's harder than waiting on God is wishing that you had and rushing into something. 
And I love that your story is one of like, look, it's not easy because I have all these outside circumstances. My friends getting married, them having jobs already, and I'm I'm not there yet. But you didn't allow that to impact what you wanted for your life, and that's what and that was what you wanted was God to intervene even and through, guide you in that. Even through the kind of dark minded days of that blow mm. of the year when I wasn't mentally where I needed to be. I, I'm thankful that I still, even though I did, you know, do some things I regretted throughout that time. Sure. I'm thankful that overall, you know, was stayed with that patience, like yes. you said. And what I love is how you mentioned we're in the house right now that TK just mentioned that he spent that three year span was some of the hardest years of your life. It was a blur. And now you're here with your wife making incredible memories that you were able to purchase from your Nana. And we're doing a passion project together. Like this is just another example of God's provision. Like God, we've been reading our Bible study about God bringing things full circle in the stories. And here's just another example of that, like where you spent some, some hard times in your life. Now you're getting to spend some of the most enriching times with your wife and your family. And I just think it's so cool how God does that. He honors your faithfulness. And I, I just want to say I, I always loved your story. And I appreciate you being transparent and honest with everyone out here. And uh, tell you what we're going to do real quick is we're going to take one more break. I do really want to say one last thing. I am sorry if I at any point I no. didn't come off kind of confusing or no anything. don't don't apologize when it's raw honest and real people can relate to that yeah. and so we're going to take one quick break and we're going to do one question with tk real quick as we wrap up this week's podcast so we will be right back in just a moment <laughs> Whew, well that was that was awesome and we were just talking off of camera during the break like just i hear the first tk story before but it never ceases to just touch my heart and uh i love you man i'm I'm genuinely proud of you and i'm honored to be a part of your life but i hope i hope it spoke to you guys like it did me which i thought a good way to end this week's podcast with tk's testimony tk what is for young, old, whatever age you may be watching this, what is one piece of advice that you would give out of all the things you've learned throughout your testimony you just shared that you would like to share with, with people to close out? Um, I guess not to be redundant, but just commit your life to God. Hmm. Like sincerely and trust in him to daily just have that genuine trust in him that you know you don't have that you just give every day to him you know if something's coming up at work or something you start to panic say hey lord i'm giving this to you because i know the only way i'm going to get through this is by you yeah. he'll help you get through it mm-hmm. um and you know allow as you trust in the lord allow him to give you the confidence to make those uncomfortable decisions that you may have to do if it's like get out of your comfort zone to talk to somebody or yeah. whatever it may be just let god control that in your life mm. and like i said he will bless you that's absolutely awesome man that's that's amazingness, <laughs> amazingness. no i i love that i think your story is one that if someone were to say summarize in a few words, it would be allow yourself to get uncomfortable so that God can place you where he wants you. And I think your story is one that just is the epitome of that. It represents that well. And again, I'm, I'm not big brother you or anything, but like I'm honored to know you and I really am proud of yeah, just I'm you. Being, to know you too. I appreciate that, man. And honestly, I think surrounding yourself with people that are different than you is so good too. That are believers yeah. in Christ because Whereas I'm a talker, I'll go talk to a brick wall if I need to. I think that's helped you. Whereas exactly. though, whereas though you have helped me, there is a beauty, and it's biblical to be slow to speak, and that's an aspect you really helped me with because your life is one of being patient, being 
slow to react, slow to to speak and do things. And honestly, in that, you're allowing spirit to react and not flesh to react. And with that, I think that's a good message you're leaving behind for a lot of people. So again, I, I thank you for, for sharing your story. I I know they were blessed by it. I don't have to say I hope you were. If you followed along this long, I know you were blessed by it. And so um, we're going to try and get on a normal routine, I hope. I'm not going to claim it or anything, but we do have some exciting ideas. We have a lot of fun things we want to do with this podcast. And we really do have some some fun can't give too much away right now, but some ideas and opportunities with sponsors and uh, can't give too much of that away right now because we got to get more on our routine before we can really commit ourselves to that. But, you know, we thank you for watching. We, we do appreciate you. you guys. This is, again, a passion project, but the fact you guys go along with us truly is a blessing. So anyway, your story was a lot better than my uh, barf in a ch- on draft day <laughs> story. So thank you for saving me, TK. Yeah. But Anyway, that's all I've got. You got anything else you want to add, my brother? Well, guys, thank you again for watching. We will see you next time. We love y'all. Bless up, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Bless Up Podcast. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to the page so you don't miss out on the exciting things God is doing as well as upcoming projects in store. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye.